Hi guys, Paul Denegris here with another Nuke tutorial. Today we're tackling the basics of 3D projection. Now I've gotten a few requests for projection tutorials and there are lots of different ways that you can use projection. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going we're to build a little simple three-dimensional set uh, using some of Nuke's 3D nodes and that's a good way to get started and learn the techniques and terminology of projection and then also uh, to j just kind of get a sense of the workflow and then we'll get into some more complicated stuff where we combine projection with uh, 3D camera tracking and use that to do paint outs and things like that but it's important to understand how projection works before we can really dive into that stuff so today what we're going to do is if you go to the show notes there is a tutorial 8 image that I have provided and it's just a simple uh, rundown kind of building. I love using these these rundown sorts of buildings for uh, for this sort of thing. Um, what we're going to do with this is we're going to build a little environment that is going to um, be three dimensional. Now you can see this is a this is a two D image, right? So if I decided to you know try and do a camera move in here. Or, uh, or push in, there'd be no parallax. There'd be no uh, depth cues that would make this feel like a 3D environment. It would, it would always read as a flat two-dimensional image. With projection, we can set up a simple set of cards in 3D space, project this image onto it, and build a very, very quick and very, very simple 3D environment that then we could use for uh, for a background for a scene or something like that. So to get started we're going to need to use some of Nuke's 3D nodes. And we are going to use a camera node. We are going to use a scene node. Cameras and scenes always go together. We're going to use a scanline renderer node. Scanline render. And scanline render uh, allows us to take our 3D environment and turn it back into 2D. When you see these round nodes like this, these are 3D nodes. They only operate in 3D in Nuke's 3D world. And I can toggle back and forth between 3D world and 2D world with the tab key. So you can see I've got a camera, looks a lot like a camera that you'd see in any other 3D environment uh, in any software package. Uh, the scanline render node is going to take whatever contents of the scene and the view of the camera and turn that into a 2D image. So we need that. We need to connect the camera, camera node to the camera pipe and I'm going to connect our environment image to the BG pipe. So that way when I look through the scanline renderer I'm going to see whatever 3D stuff that I stick into this scene superimposed on top of our image. Now to get started, I need a card. And you'll notice when you type card, you're going to see two different card nodes. One is card 3D and one is card. Card 3D is not what we're using today. Card 3D, a good way to remember this is if it says card 3D, it's including all of these 3D nodes within it. Whereas card is designed to work with these nodes. Okay, So the simpler one is what we want because we're doing the heavy lifting in terms of 3D with these other nodes. Okay, Card 3D is when you just simply want to do a little bit of 3D translation, rotation, scale, uh, or movement on a 2D image in an otherwise two-dimensional comp. Okay, Since we're using a 3D comp, we're going to use just the card. Okay, Card has two pipes, one out that's always going to go to your scene and one in that is going to be an image. For now, I'm going to add a grid. I always use grids to start building my 3D environments. And so I'm going to attach a grid. Uh, so I've got a grid feeding into the image pipe, card feeding into the scene, camera feeding into the scene, camera also feeding into the scanline render, scene feeding, sorry about that, scene feeding into the object scene pipe on the scanline render and our image feeding into the BG pipe. So this is how we get started. So let's go over to the 3D mode and let's select our card. Okay, So you should see it as this wireframe object and you can see the grid. If I take the grid pipe off you can see it better. You can see the grid on there. Now the default grid size is 1. I usually like to take this up to 10 to make those lines a little beefier so I can see them. And then I'm going to start laying this grid, these, uh, this grid card into my scene 
so that it replicates one of the planes in my image. Now I've got four planes to deal with. I've got a floor, I've got a ceiling, I've got this right wall, and I've got this back wall. So I'm going to set up a card for each of these planes. and I'm going to use the grid to help me judge perspective, help me judge focal length on the camera, things like that. So let's start with the floor. I always start with the floor because it's kind of easy uh, because you can always assume that the floor is laying flat. All right. And I'm just going to push it out into my scene a little bit. You should see it right here. You can't really see anything because it's right in the same plane as the camera. Now, if I look at this scene, the original image, the camera is slightly above the floor, you know, by, by some, some measure, right, above the floor. Uh, but it's pretty low, which is why we can see the ceiling. So I'm going to take this camera and I'm just going to nudge it up a little bit until I can see this grid on the, on the ground. Right, so I'm just kind of raised up enough to be able to see the grid. And I'm going to just move the grid a little bit further into the scene. And what I'm going to start doing is looking at perspective cues. Now it's a good idea to set up a second viewer. So I'm going to attach viewer 2 to just the, uh, the background so I can toggle back and forth real easily. So 1 will give me the scanline render output and 2 gives me just the, the uh, basic image. So I've got a, a perspective line here where the wall meets the floor and it's it's this where this white area meets the dark area it's actually pretty visible pretty easy for me to, for me to see so i'm going to use that as my perspective guide so i have to start manipulating the card to line up with that so i'm just going to start rotating the card on the y axis and start looking at how this lines up. And it's not bad. What I actually want to do is I want to move this card over and try and get one of these grid lines to line up with it. Okay, it's not terrible. right? It's a little lower here, a little higher here, so I have to make a couple of adjustments. Uh, one of the things I might adjust is the uh, the camera rotation. Uh, I definitely want to look at the camera uh, field of view. By default, the camera has has uh, defaulted to a projection length focal length of 50. I think when I look at this, that that feels a little wider than a 50 to me. That feels just from my my own experience with cameras that feels a little wider than a 50 to me. It's not fisheye certainly, but it's definitely wider than a 50. So I'm actually going to just take an educated guess and I'm going to adjust my focal length to say 35. Okay, I'm trying to stick to um, focal lengths that are, that are fairly standard. All right, so let's see if we can get this looking a little bit better. And there's a lot of guesswork in this uh, projection workflow. Uh, unless you've taken measurements of your scene, there's a lot of guesswork. I'm going to pull this back on this axis because I want to try and line this up with uh, the back wall, where the back wall meets the floor. Ideally, what you want is your perspective lines to work on in two directions, this way and this way. So I'm just going to back this up. And I think I need to rotate my card a little bit more. And I need to rotate on this axis, which in a weird way is actually the Y axis if you're doing it by the numbers. That's feeling pretty good on that back wall. And let's take a look at the right, the right wall. It's pretty good. It's not great. It's pretty good. I think that our next adjustment is going to be related to camera. Okay, my floor is actually a little, little lower here than the grid. 
whereas here it lines up pretty well. Okay. Here it lines up pretty well. Back here, not so much. Now I could fix this by, you know, making a, a tweaks to the uh, the floor plane. But I want, like I said, I want to just make an assumption that the floor is flat and level uh, anytime I do this. So that means the camera needs to tweak. So let's take the camera, and on its translates, let's just adjust the Z rotation a little bit to try and get these lines to line up better. And let's look at the X rotation. Just a little bit to try and get it to line up better on here. I think I want to go this way. Yeah, I want to tilt down. So I want to go with a negative number and try and get that to match a little bit better. And then I can probably just raise the camera up a little bit to get that line back up. And again, a lot of this is guesswork and a lot of it is just based on my, my knowledge of cameras, okay? Uh, every compositor really needs to have knowledge of cameras and lenses and how these sorts of things work because otherwise you are compositing just from your own imagination which is never going to match reality. All right, So I've just nudged it on this green axis to get, line that up better and then I'm going to pull it on the X axis to line this edge up with the, with the where the floor meets the wall. And I'm going to use that for, um, for guides for, um, for my, my two walls. Okay, So having those edges actually line up is going to work pretty nicely. I nudge this back this way. And I think I'm going to raise the camera just another smidge to get it to line up better. Something like that. All right. So you should see a nice grid that just kind of lays out, lays in where the floor is, and works pretty nicely. Okay. So let's let's take this to the next step, and and so I can show you how this is all going to work. Okay. And then we'll build the other walls and the ceiling. So what we're going to use is a, a node called Project 3D, and you'll notice Project 3D has two incoming pipes and one outgoing pipe. The incoming pipe is always going to be an image and a camera, okay? And the outgoing pipe is going to go to a piece of geometry like a card. When I do this, the grid is going to disappear and you're not going to really see any change. Where you will see the change is if I were to disconnect the BG pipe, okay? Or if I were to simply go into the 3D environment, and orbit my camera around. There is the floor of our 2D environment projected in 3D space onto a flat plane, onto a card. Okay. So in other words, my floor from my 2D image is now laid out in 3D space. Okay. So let's let's undo this. Get rid of the Project 3D for right now. Go back to my grid. We'll come back to Project 3Ds in a bit. Because now I need to build a ceiling, a right wall, and a back wall. So I'll start by duplicating, duplicating the first card, the floor card, plugging that into my scene, plugging the grid into it, and then I'm just going to raise it to where I think the ceiling should be relative to the camera. Now, because this is a rundown building, my floor and ceiling are not super uh, parallel to each other, so I'm going to have to make some adjustments. Okay. Now, I could probably continue to refine the actual um, uh, focal length of the camera to get this to fit better, and you can do that. 
Um, but at a certain point, it just becomes you're kind of chasing your own tail. And I'd much rather spend the time um, a little bit more wisely and just make some adjustments. Just assume that the roof is no longer level, that it has started to collapse. I mean, you can see in the corner that it is starting to come down. So let's just make an assumption that the, um, the ceiling is not quite level. And I'm going to make some adjustments to this card's angle. So I'm going to alter it. Not that far. And you got to be really kind of careful with this. I'm going to make a couple of tweaks. I end up finding that I do it by the numbers more often than not. Basically, what I want to do is I want to angle it down back here, and I want to angle it down here and raise it up. And I'm trying to I'm trying to line it up where it meets that back wall and also where it meets this side wall. And I'm not super worried about this. If I if I wanted to get really really detailed, I might you know bring in another card and angle it some more and get it to line up with the way the the roof is actually angled. But for our purposes today, we do not need to go that far with it. I just want to try and get it kind of roughed in there. And it's a lot of eyeballing and a lot of going back and forth. Just raise it up just a smidge more. All right, I'm going to call that good enough for, for today's purposes. OK, so you should end up with something like that. Okay, uh, and it's it's really nice to have. A, a, well, if the roof weren't all decrepit and, and nasty, um, it's certainly helpful to have grid lines in the in the image because it can help you line up. You can see I'm not quite lined up, but I'm close enough. Um, the nice thing is the projection technique is actually pretty forgiving, um, within you know to some degree, right? There's going to be times when it's not going to be so forgiving when you're trying to trying to uh, use projection to do a paint down a live action a live action shot but for this it's actually pretty forgiving all right so two more walls so we're going to duplicate this card and then just rotate it uh, up to be this wall and up to be this wall so copy paste plug this in all right and now this card, I'm just going to rotate it. Ninety degrees ish. And I'm going to move it back. I'm going to line it right up with the edge of the floor and rotate it. So you should see something like this. Just nudge it that way a little bit. Yep, that feels pretty good. Okay. And don't worry about the overlap. Oops. Don't worry about the overlap. If you if you really want to, you can you can shrink this card down, but I, I don't find that it's necessary. You'll you'll see once we start the projection, um, that's not gonna really be an issue. So duplicate the card one more time. And card four is going to become our back wall. So I'm going to rotate it on this axis, move it back.
this. And again, you know, you can be as precious with this as you want, rotate it, get it lined up as well as you possibly want to. Um, one thing I will try to be careful about is my overlaps. I want to try to keep keep my cards, you know, just slightly overlapping, but not too much. And also try and keep angles the same. So that the walls meet at a particular angle that feels consistent. Something like that. Close enough for, for the tutorial purposes. All right, so let's get our projection back in there. So I'm going to organize all of this stuff. I'm going to move my grid, disconnect all of these guys. Everything's going to turn black. That's OK. Move my grid over here. Add a Project 3D. Now, Project 3D, it literally is what it says it is. It's projecting an image in three dimensions. OK, so I'm going to project this image. I'm using the camera now as a projector. And every one of these cards is getting that image projected on it. So you should now see a neat little 3D environment. Right? Nice little 3D environment. And that works pretty well. I didn't have to do any modeling. I just simply slapped four cards in there, spent a little time lining them up, and projected the image on. Okay? And like I said, a little bit of overlap is OK, because it helps to hide these seams. If you were to build these walls to be exactly the size of the walls in the image, then you might see gaps in between. And it's helpful to not have that. Um, but what's nice is I don't have to use this, this camera uh, as my scene camera anymore. I'm going to disconnect it from the scanline renderer. Okay. I'm also going to disconnect the background image from the scanline renderer. I'm going to set my full size format now to HD 1080 and I'm going to add a new camera to my scene. All right. And this camera, I'm going to set to be a 24 millimeter focal length. And I'm just going to move it in and up a little bit. And actually, I can fly this pretty deep into the scene since my card, my uh, background is so, uh, so high res compared to 1080. I can actually push this in quite far. Well, let's just do a little keyframing. Let's uh, let's just do a little pullback. I'm gonna set a key. I'm gonna go back to the uh, go to the last frame, and I'm just gonna pull this back slightly. Just keep pulling back. I don't want to see the seams, obviously. I don't want to see edges. All right, and with that, I now should have. A pretty cool little camera move that is going to feel real. It's going to feel like it's happening in three dimensions. You're going to feel the parallax shift in the uh, in the image. <clears throat> it's not going to feel like I'm just doing a pan and scan on a simple two-dimensional image. It's going to take a little while to render, obviously. Um, once we get into 3D, things take a little longer to uh, to render previews. But what this ends up being is a really versatile way to create environments for shots. So if I needed to you know, put actors in this space, shoot the actors on the green screen and put them in this space, I could match the lens to what I used on the green screen and have this environment behave the way it really would if we were shooting this in this actual location. Uh, it would feel very much like a real three-dimensional space because it kind of is, right? All I've done is photo map these uh, these textures of these four planes: the floor, ceiling, 
uh, right and back walls, just projected them onto 3D cards. I've built simple geometry to simulate the 3D environment. Now, obviously, it's got limitations. If this image were lower resolution, this would not work. Um, uh, or it would, it would work to a limited extent. I wouldn't be able to push the camera in quite this far. Okay, so the higher res your image, the better. Um, and the more controlled your camera movement is, the better. Obviously, I have nothing. There's no information off to the right or off to the left. Like, I'm limited to only going as far back as the original image, unless I wanted to do a whole bunch of paintwork and stuff like that, which at that point I might as well spend the time building my own environment or find a lo an adequate location to shoot on. But this will give you an idea of kind of how projection works in 3D space, gives you a little primer, a little uh, introduction to, uh, to 3D projections. You can see my camera one here. I, I no longer really need this. I'm gonna call this one projector, camera projector, and I'm going to make it no longer selectable, and I'm going to turn it off. I don't need to see it anymore. It's doing its job, but I don't need to see it anymore. This camera is my actual scene camera. It's the one that matters. It's the one that's actually doing the work. It's the one that's actually creating this camera move. So hopefully you found this helpful. I really like projection. It's one of my favorite techniques. Um, I use it all the time to, uh, to build simple environments. Uh, I've used it to build complex environments like the interior of a nuclear reactor uh, built just from images that I found on Google. Um, and more importantly, this is going to be a gateway to using projection to do more complex 3D based paint outs which we will get into in a future tutorial. So if you like this, make sure you uh, click like and subscribe and leave me a comment. Let me know what else you want to see. And I will see you during the next Nuke tutorial. Stay tuned.